Mahathir Mohamed, right now, a lot of people in the world, especially in the West, are worried about the rise of so-called radical Islam, uh, the threat posed by fanatical groups such as ISIL. As the former leader of an influential, wealthy, prosperous Muslim-majority country, how worried are you about that? I feel very strongly that the Muslims have now rejected the teachings of the Quran. They are not behaving according to what is enjoined by the Quran. They are not allowed, they are, Muslims are supposed to be brothers. They are not allowed to kill each other. They are not allowed to kill even. But this is what they are doing. And it cannot be because they are following the teachings of Islam as found in the Quran. So what are they following? What's the ideology behind all this? I think it is political. They think that uh, they cannot fight the big powers with... Uh, with all those uh, sophisticated weapons, uh, battleships and airplanes and all that. So they are res resorting to what we call terrorism. Uh, and it is escalating. And as you, you care to study, you will find that this started when the state of Israel was formed. And since then, the level of uh, activities or terrorist activities have increased because they feel frustrated. Whatever they do, they cannot uh, get any redress uh, over their, uh, their problems with uh, Israel. Malaysia has had, I think, around 100 people go out uh, to fight for ISIL and associated groups in Syria and Iraq. A government minister in Malaysia said last year up to 50,000 Malaysians may sympathize with ISIL and its ideology. Do you agree that Malaysia has a domestic ISIL problem? And if you were still prime minister, what would you do to tackle it? ISIL attracts sympathy and support from all over the world. It's not surprising that some uh, misled uh, Malaysians should be taken in by what they talk about. In any case, lots of people everywhere feel that uh, the, uh, in the uh, attempt by the Palestinians to get back their land, uh, the West has not been sympathetic. So they resort to what they can do, not with battleships and airplanes, but with uh, very crude ways of terrorizing people. Okay, but ISIL don't care about the Palestinians. They're fighting in Syria and Iraq. Those are the conflict zones they're in. They're a product of those conflicts. They say very little about Palestine or Israel. They haven't attacked Israel. So what would you do at home to tackle Malaysian support for ISIL? Is there something you do at a madrasa level, at a student level, at an education level? Uh, while we can think about how to uh, act against them militarily, we should also think, try and think about the causes of this thing. Everything has a cause. If you say it is uh, not Islamic, then it must be political. If it is political, what is the uh, political problem faced by them? Find out what is at the base of this, at the uh, cause of this, and try and uh, overcome those causes, reduce those problems, then I think you will be able to tackle this terrorist problem more effectively. Right now in Malaysia, the quote-unquote Islamist party Paz is trying to pass a hudud bill in parliament, a bill to bring in stonings, amputations, lashings, uh, and it has the support of your former party, UMNO, uh, which is governing the country. What has happened to Malaysia, which was supposed to be a quote-unquote moderate Muslim country when you were prime minister? They tried to bring up, bring these hudud laws uh, before, during my time. I rejected it because it is un-Islamic. In a multiracial, multi-religious country, you cannot have two laws for the same crime. But uh, they don't care whether it is just or unjust. They just want to win the support of extreme uh, uh, Muslims so that they can will, win the general election. It is not about trying to uh, Islamize Malaysia. But where are those extremists coming from? You can't blame Palestine and Israel for people supporting stonings and beatings. Why do some Malaysians support these horrific acts of stonings, beatings, flashings? No, they, they want to do it, but the general population will not uh, accept it. They will not support it. There will only be problems in Malaysia if they try to do it. But in any case, 
they are too small and they are never ever going to become the central government.